So regarding the, the concept of blogging, uh, I think that's the main thing that I wanted to say in terms of what is it, a little bit of advice on the why, uh, a little talk on hardware, software, distribution and such. It's just another marketing tool. Uh, we kind of also touched on side concepts, you know, Patreon, PayPal, etc. Um, I'm happy to, if you have questions, to continue on podcast stuff or uh, to talk about things we talked about on different uh, days. Um, so opening it up to questions to the class. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I have a question. Could you do a CD podcast? Yeah. The topics are completely open-ended of what you'd like to do mm -hmm. in terms of, let's say, are you doing it simply for a hobby? perfectly fine or are you doing it as a sort of extension for your business mm -hmm. once you know that then you could uh, work toward creating the best version of the podcast but yes you can make a podcast on it yeah yeah because uh, similar to uh, what I'm doing here and what many do is that they put out one version for the public that won't pay or can't pay or whatever and then a version then that you uh, that people could pay for and um, uh, make money off of that Interesting. thank you mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so let's do a free version on the sound, sound club and um, they can trigger to the picture you doing the same thing or the traffic might go back to Yes, you could have uh, the free uh, version out public and then the, the paid version, yeah, all linked linked together. So the idea here is put out free content, you know, anywhere. Quick reminder, no eating in the classroom, please. So put out free content uh, and um, a version that is... Uh, short, uh, shorter than the uh, paid version, and then put out a paid version, paid version, or put out paid content via Patreon or PayPal or GoFundMe, Kickstarter, whatever. Um, payment systems there are so a premium version to justify payment and uh, unfortunately again it's very easy to click like it's very easy to reply thumbs up and all of that but then suddenly it's so much harder to click buy or donate even at a dollar so it's not impossible of course it's just it takes that effort and, and the time and the and the content so a free version and then a paid version and you're definitely gonna have some percentage usually the larger percentage of people that that get the free version but then you probably can get enough of the paid uh, version that you uh, that it's justified that it pays you back yes how much content would you recommend before you sell on using Patreon? it doesn't have to be a lot it just has to be enough that shows what uh, what the person will get out of out of subscribing? Let me show you here. What Patreon does is they have the, uh, they they do a very good job of guiding you how to set up your account to try to get patrons, which are contributors. And one of the things they say is create a video that puts the human face on. Who am I donating to, and why? What are you going to get? So let me play this briefly. It's like less than two minutes that this is the example here. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos. Thank you for checking out my Patreon. I'm a pop culture fan just like you. I'm really into comic books and Magic the Gathering. I hope you can become a contributor of mine on Patreon. It'll really help me out. So Patreon is where you can contribute on a monthly basis, $1, $2, $3, any amount that you want to help me create cool content for you. I'm sure you've got a few bucks laying around. What happened, what happened to the volume? Just a moment. Then 
and I think you're gonna like the stuff that I create, so why not pass around those few bucks over to me to help me out? <laughs> I think Patreon is one of the best ways for people like you to help fund creators like me to help me bring the great stuff to you. Well, what are you helping to fund? I'm gonna make videos, I'm gonna make podcasts, I'm going to make blogs all about comic books, Magic the Gathering, all that great stuff. Maybe you're interested in building a standard deck? Well, check out my Black White Vampires Ixalan deck. I'm a big fan of comics just like you. I'll be talking about comics every week. Maybe you're into magic and you're just getting started. I'll have videos on beginners, how to get started with magic. I have an interesting collection of classic comics that I love to share. And you'll also see videos of magic duels that I have with my playgroup. So I'm going to need you, loyal Patreon subscriber, to help me out with some of that. Production costs, equipment upgrades and such. Oh, and buying comics and magic cards to bring to you in great videos, blogs, and podcasts. My goal is to reach about $256 per month from loyal patrons, and that'll really help me out in creating the content that I want to bring you. Once we can reach those higher levels of contributions, we're in for some real cool treats. I'll be able to create more videos, do more streaming, more deck tech, and all that great stuff. So once again, thank you for checking out my Patreon, and I hope to see you as a contributor. This has been VM Campos. Is that scripted? No. It's, it's right off the dome. Wow, it's pretty good. I did have to maybe repeat myself and then edit it and get the best version. But this came straight from when you create the Patreon account, it tells you, here's a checklist of what you should do. And it says, you know, create a video that tells people what's in it for them, you know, for their one whole dollar that, that, they, that you pried out of their wallet, uh, what will they get if they contribute? So uh, I need to redo it because I, I created that back in January and now I have more footage and more stuff to say. But, uh, you know, tell them with your contribution, you're going to get this. Uh, you're, you're going to, you know, you tell them in a way you're, you're exclusive, you're going to get something that other people don't. Uh, or can't, and uh, just show what, what you're going to get out of it for your contributions. Yeah. So as your clientele gets bigger, then so you, if you donate a certain monies, then you start giving them gifts? Something? Yeah. That's the part that I still have to kind of uh, figure out a, a little better. It says, like over here, if you set some sort of a goal, when people see when you reach a certain goal, then you give more stuff. Now here, uh, I probably am going to change this, but what I have here, when I reach $256, I'll start a new podcast where I interview one patron every month. So it's like having guests on the show. Um, that was one of the suggestions they gave. I'm probably going to change it. Uh, and uh, this, this value was arbitrary. I just chose a value. It didn't really matter. But you can set this up for various tiers. You saw that if you donated a dollar, you're in this tier. You're in the Pichu tier. If you donate two dollars, you're in the Pikachu tier. If you donate three, you're in this tier. So there's different ways to kind of customize it and entice uh, the patrons. So you, you do the oh, you do the uh, Patreon almost like a live version when you do your when they record the other uh, person. No, um, that's still again like. Um, the logistics of that, I haven't figured it out because it's so far from the goal. Yeah. Uh, but what what you see at the Patreon, it could sort of be like your main hub for everything. Because yeah. right now, if you if you go check it out, if you if you guys go check it out yourselves, patreoncom campos you will you will see how it is that there's this overview where I have the video. Then there's text that kind of explains it all. Then you see the posts. You can also go to posts. You see that when I put something on YouTube, you're not subscribed to me on YouTube. Well, that's okay. I'm going to let you know on Patreon. If you're not subscribed to my podcast, that's okay. I'm going to let you know on Patreon. So it's like you consolidate everything in the Patreon. No matter where people are at, they will um, see it here. If they if they subscribe, then they'll keep they'll keep up to date with you. And this can connect to your website or your. Uh... Not that this connects to your website in such a way, it's that your website connects to this. So if on the website you're doing blogs or whatever, you can connect that over to Patreon. Uh, 
I guess you can put a link, like you can put the logo of Patreon and such on your website at, at the very least. Yeah. This is kind of one stop shop for all the content. Yeah. When I remember to update it. Because I'm creating the content on the various networks, and then that takes the effort and the time to do it, and then I forget, oh, I, sh I also needed to mention it on Patreon. You can go back and add it, of course. But yeah, this is like the whole one stop shop consolidated. Yes? Um, so do you pay for Patreon? No. You don't pay for it, but uh, they take a commission from your contribution. So, uh, you know, right here, mm, you know, five patrons are, are donating. Um, it was it was actually more like uh, nine dollars, but after fees, it comes down to seven dollars. So they take a little bit of the commission of if someone's donating to you five dollars a month, you're going to get out of it like four dollars and eighty cents, something like that. So um, there's always that middleman for transaction costs. Yeah. So it's free to create, but they take a little bit out of out of your contributions for a commission. Five people in total that are donating seven dollars a month. Yeah. I'm you know. looking at it right now. It says they, they get five percent and the transaction fees average five percent. So ten percent is going to go. There you go. Ten percent or five percent? Uh, it says transaction fees average five percent. Yeah, they said we keep five percent. Transaction fees average five percent. We keep ninety percent. Okay. Yeah. You keep ninety percent. So out of that dollar, if someone donates a dollar, you keep 90 cents out of it, which is, you know, it's 10 percent. But, you know, you, you don't, you don't, I don't know, you don't, I don't, I wouldn't say you feel it because it just happens automatically and then the net goes to your bank account. So, yeah. so you said that this is already connected to your PayPal. Yeah. So that's how your, your money is being Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe you can set it up that after you reach a threshold, then it goes to PayPal. It, you know, it's kind of being held in escrow. Uh, I forgot how I set it up, but there's those two options that either every transaction automatically goes to your PayPal, but you know, every time there's a transaction, there's a transaction fee. So if you wait for a, a threshold, you know, hundred dollars or fifty or whatever, then at that time it gets transferred, and then it's a one-time fee. So then there's a transaction fee from here as well as a transaction fee from PayPal. Yeah. Yes, but it's two different companies, so in a sense, they transfer. But I think with PayPal, though, when you actually make purchases through your PayPal account, you don't have. Exactly. Yeah. So if you transfer that money out of your PayPal back to your real bank, okay, there's a fee there. But if you then use the money in PayPal. I'm sorry. The transaction between Patreon and PayPal is quite precise. If you yeah, all of this definitely a lot of nuances, but um, it's all in there somewhere in there uh, in their frequently asked questions and all of that. But yeah, it is a lot of detail. So um, Patreon takes a percentage. Your money can be. I think they've got now, they've also got Stripe, which is a competitor to PayPal. I'm not sure what their fees are, but probably slightly less than PayPal because they're trying to uh, compete. Your money can be sent over to PayPal or Stripe. Check fees to determine which you would like to use. More fees may be incurred at the escrow account. It's probably not the right term, but we can use PayPal or Stripe. That's the escrow account. Your money's being held there. So there may be fees there uh, from then moving it over to your regular bank, credit union, whatever. Uh, and oftentimes, no fee if you use the money that's in the account rather than transferring it out of the account. So um, 
very useful to explain uh, where their money goes, what's in it for them. Because even at a, even at a dollar, even at a dollar a month, um, you have to convince people. So the sort of the user guide of Patreon, I thought was very good. It, it, give, it gave you a checklist and make sure you do this, make sure you do that. And then it says, don't forget to also promote yourself on your, on your Twitter or your Facebook or your Google Plus. So the more you get the word out, the, the better, and then it, you reach more people. All right, any, any other questions? Yes. No, that's okay. That was that's what today was for. Sure. Let me also put here in the notes. <laughs> Uh, the big secret to Google Plus is to use communities. So, with that in mind, let me get let me get into Google Plus in a moment. So, all of these networks have um, the um, the same actions about liking and replying and all of that. The interface is going to be different because they're all different. They're all competitors. But the big secret, the way that I found that Google Plus has worked very well for myself, personal, and for clients, is to use communities. So let me get into Google Plus, and then we'll look at it. We'll look at it there. Okay, so um, definitely the interface looks a lot different from uh, from from Facebook, but you have your main screens of home, discover, communities, profile, people, and notifications. So some of these should be obvious from network to network in terms of if I want to see uh, who followed me, who replied to me, notifications. If I want to see who I'm connected to, people. If I want to see what my public profile is to the rest of the world or to edit it, it's profile. The important thing then is home and communities, and I guess to some degree discover, although discover here is sort of like a general overview of general topics and stuff about movies and, I don't know, politics and art and such. It's just kind of general general topics that may or may not be useful, you know, stuff about cats, of course. And um, I think the most valuable part uh, about the um, about the network is uh, using communities. So under communities, the, this is where people congregate on a, on a topic. Uh, here in this particular topic, 9,000 members, over here 1,000 members. So communities are where, this is where I would actually post my content to. So search for communities based on keywords, join communities, post to them or share to them to reach a captive audience. If I am interested in a certain topic, I find a community, I join that community and I share there because everyone else is interested in that topic. I'm a restaurateur, I'm a lawyer, uh, I'm a daycare, I try to find um, communities you know, about family 
or money or, or kids. I try to find that topic of a community to join. And that's where I'm going to post my, my, my marketing or my posts and such on those topics. So if I was interested, let's see some of the ones over here. So uh, again, here about comic books. This one's about comics. So I go there, and there's a thousand people over here uh, talking about uh, various uh, comic topics. So if I review comic books, I have a, if I have a comic book podcast, I go here to where people are talking about comics. And so those that would be most interested would see my content. So I can search up here, uh, let's say real estate. When I search real estate, I'll see communities about real estate. Real estate, 1,400 people. Real estate, 41,000 people. Real estate, 34,000 people. I would say tips here. Join communities that are larger and that allow self-promotion. These communities are um, set up and, and managed by moderators. Someone has decided what's OK and what's not OK to post. So always read the rules. Because I just saw three communities there. One had 40,000, one had 30,000. One of them said, ask to join. And one of them simply says, join. So one of them might be better than the other. See, this one says, simply join. This one's asked to join. You can click the thumbnail to, to see what's there. So Dean Knows posted this. Joseph Allaham posted that. Reality Biz News Land for Sale. Now this one uh, seems to be um, perhaps not as good as the other one because I'm seeing some spam. Like there's little baby tube coloring pages for kids. So either the moderator hasn't gotten around to removing it, or the community isn't quite policed as well as it should be. That's why the other one that says ask to join is probably better because this one's got actual people um, actual people moderating it. And you can see all the rules on the side over here. Please do not post your website saying how awesome it is and why we need to visit it. This is also not a place to promote real estate listings or local market reports. Share real estate articles that will make people want to engage with you. So check the rules, um, join communities, follow the rules, post to the communities. And I think that's the big, that's the big thing with Google Plus. Every other screen and such is reminiscent of the other uh, networks, the icons are a little different and, and such, but you have, um, you know, you know that that's like the like right there. That plus one is a like. That's a share, and then you have a way to comment once you join the community. Armin, yes. So back on question from the Patreon. So are you are you creating your own community, or you have the join community to upload your? I would um, I would usually not create a community. Okay. The problem with that is then you have to now put take on a new job of being a moderator. Yeah, right. yeah. So okay. also here, tip: don't create communities because you say I don't see a perfect community about my topic. I'm going to create one. 
Well, then now you've also got to invite people and entice people and manage the spam and all of that. So just find a community close enough to your topic and then take advantage of it. Okay, so when you, when you did your podcast, you go to a community that you're well, on the comic book and then you, if you join the radio and you upload your podcast to that community. I link my podcast because it's uploaded to SoundCloud. Okay. I link my podcast at the at the community so that they can, uh, and it, since it's embedded, they will be able to play it off of Google Plus or click to follow it back to SoundCloud to listen to more. Right, so you have to join the community, uh, follow the rules, and then when you uh, get with your podcast or video, then you just create the link in the description. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yes. Collections. collections have been de-emphasized because if you notice here they're not on the main sidebar anymore they used to be you have to go over to your own profile and then uh, you can see your own collections so these are collections that I have on my profile I've got a group of, of posts about comics I've got a group of posts about magic cards and um, this is a community I've joined. So these over here are collections that I created. There's my icon, and these are ones where I've joined. So the big idea with, the big difference with collections and communities are that one is that you control it, and the other is that you are part of a group. So collection versus community. You created it, only you can post to it community while you can create your own community like I said I don't recommend you create your own community so we'll just keep it simple and saying you joined it anyone can post to it but in your collection people can comment yeah if I post something there in my collection they can comment it reply to it and such but they cannot post a new item to the collection only I can because it's mine but for the community anyone can post to it and anyone can reply They changed it. It used to be, yeah, it, it was there, but it used to be on the side over here, very easy to get to. And now you have to go to your profile, view all communities and collections, and then you've got a spot here to create a collection. Mm -hmm. Okay, any, uh, any other questions on? Yeah. You remember on the top of the URL where you can put your plus Google, plus Google.com, and then you can have your, your username there? Where do you, where do you change that? They, that's another thing that they've changed, but I believe you need to find it over here. So the default is uh, that when you create a Google Plus account, you're going to have your own unique address that is, you know, googleplus.google.com uh, slash gibberish. Yeah. If you want to claim your, your name that's nice and readable like that, uh, there's a couple of, uh, there's a, there's a couple of, uh, uh, requirements. I, I, I think they change them every once in a while. But I believe the requirements are like you have to have the account active for a couple of weeks, and you have to have the profile com completed and, and set up. Then after that, uh, inside of Edit Profile, there will be, so under Profile, Edit Profile, somewhere in there, there's going to be a spot there to claim your short name, your, your readable name. Let's see, where would it be? Yeah, I think it might be over here. So I'm under profile. Since, since I've already said it, 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 it's not the same. But under profile, and then under about, and then there's a spot in my case over here, sites, and it says custom URLs. And then you can edit that section. You, you should be able to put these.
So on most of these, uh, it takes the uh, the practice and being active with them. And oh, just to remind everyone again, uh, if you weren't here on, on previous sessions, actually, socialmediaexaminer.com is a great website that I recommend uh, to keep up to date with social media. We have lots and lots of articles for free about everything social media, social media examiner. Uh, on every topic, we talk about podcasts today. You can go to the section where they discuss podcasts. Uh, you want to get more info on Twitter, Google+, etc. They have various tutorials on that. And I really like it because there's a brand new article, two or three articles like every day on a variety of topics. And uh, that's a great website to keep up to date with all of this social media. I really recommend it. If you were here on a previous session, I've mentioned it, but if you weren't here, this is the website. Are there any websites that other people like to visit regarding technology or social media that you'd like to share to the class? This is another one that I like, theverge.com. It's a little bit more in general about technology, pop culture, science, and all of that. But uh, there's a variety of topics. MobileMarketer.com. Yeah. Just make some notes over here. Nice websites. Snapchat preps test of unskippable six second ads. Amazon releases kid focused Echo Dot special Alexa version. Yeah, so why social commerce isn't hashtag trending yet? Well, at the least, you see a headline, and then if it seems relevant to you, then you check out the rest. Yeah. This is interesting. WhatsApp ups minimum user age in Europe. So Europe uh, has seemed to be much more on the cutting edge of user privacy than the US. So here now, it looks like you need to be at least 16 years old to use, for example, WhatsApp. In the US, you can be as, as young as 13. There's also, over in Europe, you can actually request Google remove everything about you in the search results, and they will comply. You can't do that in the US yet. OK, here's another one. Um, search Engine Land. I'm going to mention this one if you take my SEO class. But searchenginland.com. That one focuses a little bit more on, uh, on SEO uh, analytics. Uh, and that sort of aspect of things. So apparently Google uh, changed their algorithm this week. Google confirms rolling out a broad core search algorithm update earlier this week. I hadn't heard about it, so Google's changed something. So there's the article that'll tell you what has changed. Surefire tactics to get the most value out of a budget-limited campaign. So if I don't have money to burn like it says. Since few people have money to burn, contributor Amy Bishop shares how to get the best return on your AdWords campaigns by understanding what is valuable and trimming 
wasted spin. Okay, um, those are some websites that I like to keep up to date with technology. Oh, uh, one more that I just remembered, um, <clears throat> Mashable.com. This one is another one, a little bit more regarding pop culture and such, but there's a section up at the top to focus on business. Five tips to nailing a business introduction. All right, so any other questions on, on topics? Yes, I'll try my best to, to answer um, promptly. Yeah, it's just that I do teach a variety of classes, but yeah, you can uh, uh, have my email. Uh, it's, it's, saved. it's saved in the network folder, but I'll put it here also. Pretty easy to remember. vcampos at sdccd.edu. And then these videos that I record uh, for the lectures, they're going to be there always. I'm not going to take them down. Um, YouTube has unlimited space, basically. So you can go back and uh, replay any of the videos from, from this session, or part one or part two. You can go get the videos over at youtube.com slash instructor victor c slash playlists. Then you just find um, the the playlist of the particular class you're interested in and play it back. Well, if there's no more questions, then we can all head out to the pizza parlor and get a final pizza. <laughs> No more, no more questions? OK, let me put this into the network folder. And uh, we'll turn on the printer. And we'll have a little lab time if you want to talk a little bit more. Um, this is in the Social 3 folder. And Um, 427. So now we've got the uh, the notes that I wrote today. All of the material from the previous sessions are also there. Social one and two. You can grab those if you want. <laughs>